sleep. Oh, 
week. And uh, it was that. It makes me sick. I just, I hate it. And, uh, but I, things like that, things like that cause me just to dig deeper. I'm going to do more and serve more and give more and rally more. And uh, I was talking to a preacher, I was in North Carolina, which was about a week ago. And he said, there's something about that generation like your mother and dad's age. My parents are in their 80s. There's something about that that's it's a toughest shoe on. Just nothing can stop. I guess we're talking about Brother Bobby Robinson. And of course, you know he's had his esophagus removed. Pastor the same church 50 years. In a town of 1,500 people. And some guys are there over 3,000. And it's a great church. And the average on the weekly makes it somewhere between 2,900 and 3,600. He's had his esophagus removed. And he's had one third of his stomach. So now his stomach is up here. And it had to put on a swing every week since the surgery to stretch that throat so he can speak and already eat. He's lost over 50 pounds. But uh, they can't put a person to sleep every week like this. That help him. One of these times he won't wake up. And so they're teaching him twice a week how to stick this thing down his throat and stretch that thing. It's the grossest thing I've ever heard. We were out visiting one of his members that I love, you know, and uh, he's telling me, you got to get out of that bed and work, you got to fight. He said, I hate sticking that thing down my throat. I gag, I choke, but it's either that or die. And I'm not going to die. And I like that spirit. And uh, in this church, I don't know what you're going to face in 2007. I don't know what we're going to face. We're going to face a lot of difficulties. I wish I could write a book. But you wouldn't believe it if I wrote it. And if I wrote it, most people would sue me. But uh, it's just a, it's an amazing thing. It's just an amazing. But uh, I don't know what the scripture, none of these things move me. Right. And by the grace of God, we keep on keeping on and serve God until He comes to end. We're praying for the Lord's family here. I know that uh, you tell them I'm praying for them. I know that they've been struggling with this cancer. We pray for your pastor. We still love your pastor and his wife. My wife is going to say hello. And uh, we're grateful for this great church. Your Bibles tonight, the book of Exodus, please. The book of Exodus, in chapter 14. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being our friends. And all students have come our way. And uh, Brittany is here tonight. We're so thankful for her. And uh, a blessing. We're grateful for all your support and love for the college. And these are great things. God's doing some wonderful things. Just had another one of our young men call to the church. And uh, another man accepted the call to the church. And we're excited about that. We're in Exodus chapter 14. And in verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak, Exodus 14, did I say that? Exodus 14, Speak, under the children of Israel, that they, what's that word? Turn. Say it one more time, please. That they, turn. see, this was God's idea to turn. It wasn't their idea. And it can't be for a pile up between Michael and the sea over against Belsabon, before it shall, you shall uh, encamp by the sea. And Pharaoh was sent. You see, God turned them, but Pharaoh will say, Oh, Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness have, three words, class, read those, please, shut them in. I'm going to speak to you tonight of one word, we'll continue in the scripture in a moment. The word is not found in this text, though you will see. The thought of the word in this text. When I speak on this one word and I give you the word in the moment, undoubtedly, immediately, something's going to come to your mind. It immediately, things come to my mind when I say this word. Uh, perhaps it's going to involve your parents. And I'll say the word, an illustration will come about your parents. I think of, of this illustration. Yes, yesterday I dealt with a precious little girl, 24 years of age, with her Sunday school teacher. And uh, she's from a country where the parents choose the mate. That happens, of course, in one particular country, in India, over one million people, they 
excuse for their children. They never met them. Uh, one, uh, one man, a new Christian in our church, barely just met him saying a short time. He just went to India and he met his wife for the first time and were married. Parents chose. This girl's parents had chosen her mate. She said, I talked to him on the phone. Thank you. 
single decisions. I told my church last night I was in my room in North Carolina, I was preaching the revival, and uh, at 11 o'clock at night, I was trying to stay on California time, so I don't go to bed uh, at California, I don't go to bed at North Carolina time, I go to bed at California time, I get up on California time. At 11 o'clock at night, every night I listen to the program that makes you face yourself and think, I'm sad. And I heard the true story, they said many times on the shackle, you'll hear a man or a woman that got saved from a lot of alcohol or drugs and came to Christ. He said, my story. I was raised in a good church. My mother was saved. My dad was saved. My parents were bus workers. But one Sunday morning, my mother said, we're not going to church. And the boy said, what about dad? He's not going either. The son said, why don't we go? He said, the woman said, because so and so, a woman in the church, and she said, that woman drives me crazy, and that woman's a friend of me, and I'm not going back. That boy said, Dad's not going, you're not going. I heard my own ears before me. He said, I'm not going either. That boy eventually <laughs> destroyed totally his life. But their entire family pivoted on that one decision to do wrong. Now, your life and my life is not marked by flashing uh, uh, lights and, uh, and, and, and uh, 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 what do you think blow off of uh, 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 on your life for? Uh, explosions and uh, fireworks? No, no, no. It's the moments, the small moments that become pivotal moments. Tonight, the children of Israel find no human way out. You're looking at a man, your pastor. His wife. There's had to be there's many times there's no way out. No human answer. In my ministry, there have been so many times there's no human way out of the situation. Tonight, we're going to find that in these brief verses that all of history is going to hinge on this moment. In verse number 8, the Bible says, The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. In verse number 9, And the Egyptians pursued after them. And verse 10, and the Pharaoh drew nigh, and the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. Behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. These people, they lived through the ten plagues. These people lived through the four hundred years of bondage. How oh, much freedom! So they fall. And they're trapped. What do you do when you're trapped? And I don't want to give us a brief formula in a few moments, but I won't be long. The formula when trapped, and I know this is the formula, and I know it works. In verse number 13, Moses said unto the people, Moses said unto the people, there are three words. Would you read those next three words with me? Ready, begin. Fear ye not. That's what you do when you try. Fear ye not. Say it one more time with me. Ready, begin. Fear ye not. All of them, ready? Fear ye not. Fear ye not. You see, fear 
you're looking at the man that's speaking. I've also had great faith. I can recall since I've been with you last year, lying in bed at night in fear and fret. This whole thing is so heavy. God, what do I do? Oh, and then, you know, okay, Monday morning quarterback, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done that. I, 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 we should not have started this. I should not have started that. I shouldn't have been built this building. I should not have. Oh, and, you know, anything can go from hindsight. And I lay in bed and I worry. And so then I get up and I go downstairs and I start to pray. And I pray. And after I pray a while, I start worrying again. Do a God, do a Lord work, you know, that God wants me to do. No! God doesn't want that. I can recall one night, I've been going downstairs and praying. And this fear gripped my heart so much. And I tried to pray. I really tried to be, but it's so spiritual. I tried to give it to God. The pastor, I know, I, I, I know, you know, I was supposed to deposit with God. I just could not get the picture. I tried singing, I tried praying. Went back and laid in bed. And there's a verse that you know so very well. And then you quote it, I quote it, but just particularly that night. I was laying in bed, I don't know, maybe two or three in the morning. And I began to just got put in my heart, first Peter 5 7. Casting all your care upon him. For he cares for you. And God used that night. I'm not saying I haven't had fear since then. God used that night. I got back out of bed and had a time with God. You see, fear ruins faith. And tonight, whatever the obstacle is in your life, yes, it's a human tendency to have fear. But we walk not in the flesh, but we walk in the spirit.
Jack Butler. Well, Jack, I'm coming back. Hmm. <laughs> I've been praying for years. Do something! No, he was no longer standing still. He tied my kid to California. He, he stole that property. I've been in California 32 years ago. He's on that property. Still jam, still pack.
sorrow's parents. All their dreams are shattered. But they got the family. Ha! Stand still. I was, I was a lady down over here. Her whole world has caved in on her over the last 23 years. This has caved in. This and this. She's had a life of huge sorrow. Somehow, she still sings in the choir. Somehow, she's still sensible. Someone, someone, someone. At a pivotal time in her life, she had made a decision to stand and stand. All right? Wait, child. Ready? Rehearsal for me, please. Three words, not trap. Your trap. Three words. Ready? Fear me now. Two words. Stand still. One word. Look at the next word. Fear ye not. Stand still. And one word. He'll never do it like you have to fight. See, I would have some engineers and architects out there. We were designed a bridge. But we would have figured out a way to uh, dam that river up and stack that water up and reroute it.
And God says, so I turned to you. I put you right there. You look at the head, and it's walk, and it's grounded. You look at the behind, and the enemy's coming. You can't turn the right to left. There's no time. So you're stuck. You're going to have to depend upon me. I'm not saying with Kirby, I don't like it all the time. I think, well, why can't there be some light on But there's going to be some light on it. So that very soon we're going to see it. Amen. I think of what he did for me. And he took, but what you said tonight, God used you, Pastor, so much that here I am, an old sinner. And not even saved me, but it opened my eyes to see that I need to be saved. I was witnessing this morning in my office to a high official. And his eyes could not last me. And he wants it. Conservative, a patriotic American. But he could not comprehend. When you were saying that last week, God would be dying for me. Somehow by his grace, my eyes were open. Amen. And see, I need him. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I just don't need him in salvation. I need him in trap. Yeah. I was saying on the way down here this morning, this afternoon, Dr. Lee Roberts was singing the songs. Y'all don't mind me, get bowls. Just don't mind me, get bowls. Jesus is near to comfort and cheer. Just when I need him, he's there. Yeah. Sometimes it seems like God will you. He can't see you, he can't hear you. He knows. In my midnight hour, he knows. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will die till the day is done. Oh, there's no thing. Like the Holy Jesus. You're trapped tonight. You're trapped. You're just stuck. No way out. The only hope you have is fear of you. So I hope you have. The only hope I have. Two of us, the only hope I have. Stand and sit and wait. You see, I'll do it. I'll do it. Our Father is a great 